I recently saw a news blurb calling attention to a stand of old-growth forest in Minnesota's Chippewa National Forest. It's an interesting story. A group of cold and tired surveyors made some guesstimates that placed a lake where no lake existed. The result being that a 40-acre stand of white pine was excluded from the maps that lumber companies used to determine where they could cut. Somehow it was never logged, and today it's an attraction. The thing that caught my eye was that this is a 40-acre stand. I'm sure it's nice, but the Adirondacks contain several contiguous stands of more than 30,000 acres that were never cut, and numerous stands in the range of 500 to 5,000 acres exist. The vast majority of old-growth forest in the eastern U.S. is right here in the Adirondacks. So how much old-growth forest exists in the Adirondacks? The answer is tricky. It depends entirely on your definition of old-growth, and estimates range from 250,000 acres to as much as a million acres. If you only include areas that were never touched by logging, the acreage is toward the lower end of that scale. But many areas were selectively or lightly logged, and over 500,000 acres have been part of the forest preserve for more than 130 years. Those areas are returning to old-growth conditions, even if they were cut at some point. It's worth mentioning that old-growth isn't just cathedral-like stands of white pine or hemlock. The half-dozen major forest types present in the Adirondacks are mixed in an endless mosaic, and stands of 200-year-old sugar maple and yellow birch are just as impressive as the softwoods and probably more common. The single classification for which we know the acreage with certainty are those areas untouched by human activity. The acreage in that category is zero. Even the most remote and pristine places have been significantly altered by human activity. Indigenous peoples certainly altered their environment, But things really got going 400 years ago with the arrival of Europeans. We've killed off numerous species and introduced others. From the eradication of wolves and mountain lions at the top of the food chain, to introductions of fish, plants, insects, and pathogens, every biotic level has been altered. We've even introduced large mammals. Research has shown that the continent-wide dispersal of the coyote was a result of efforts to eradicate coyotes in the West. Coyotes, like humans, are highly adaptable, and it remains to be seen which species will last the longest. Along with the biological chaos, acid rain and other airborne pollutants ignore wilderness boundaries, and they affect which trees can prosper and which ones are stressed. And then there's climate change. But it's not my intent to downplay the value of old growth in the Adirondacks. On the contrary, no matter what you include, the protected forests of the Adirondacks represent a reserve of immense value, a topic I will return to in future videos.